Hello everyone. This is the probability method course, MAS 583. So <coughs> uh, let's me just summarize how the course will be. So due to the COVID-19, we will do the, I mean, this course will be online course. It will be, I mean, I will upload the videos, which is non-real time. So I will upload the recorded video of the lecture twice a week. So originally the lecture is uh, Monday and Thursday, Monday and Wednesday, but uh, I will probably put uh, one or two days before the actual lecture days so that uh, you can have uh, more time to watch the lecture video. We will roughly follow the textbook, which is the book called the Probability Method. It's by Alon and Spencer. I will use the fourth edition. Uh, but if you happen to have a previous edition, then I mean it is not. I mean not mandatory to buy the new edition. But uh, some of the stuff that I will cover, are actually in the fourth edition, but not in the previous edition. So I mean. I mean, still without the textbook, you, you will be able to follow the lecture. So I would advise not to buy the new one if you have a, if you don't have a, if you have a previous edition. <coughs> and your grade will be determined by homeworks. There will be, I mean, at least eight and probably at most 10. I mean, let's say, I mean, larger number to be safe. So probably, I mean, around 10 homeworks. And the homeworks will be mostly the asking you to solve the exercise from the textbook. So, I mean, if you want to do some problems in advance, then you can just, I mean, try to solve the, te I mean, exercise from the textbook. Again, I mean, there are some problems in the fourth edition, but not in the third edition. So that uh, when I, make certain, I mean, problem as on homework, then I will make sure that uh, I will, I mean, specify what exactly the problem is. So that uh, even if you have an older edition, you can still, I mean, figure out the, I mean, problem. <coughs> so, so today let's see some examples of the probability method so that uh, we understand what we will learn throughout the semester. So what is the probability method? So it's kind of a pro proof method using probability to solve some problems. I mean, mostly we will solve many combinatorial problems using probability. So this is uh, some proof method using probability to solve some combinatorial problem. It doesn't have to be, I mean, only to combinatorial problem, but most of the things that we will learn is regarding combinatorics. <coughs> so let's consider one example. So one easy, easy example from the graph theory, I mean, is about the Ramsey number. So what we can consider is that, uh, consider we have some graph, which is a complete graph. So I will assume that uh, all of you have taken the undergraduate graph theory course and undergraduate discrete math course. So I assume you are familiar with that and some basic probability you are familiar with that. So assume we have a complete graph on some n vertices. Now let's consider the situation that uh, we color the edges with two colors. Red and blue. Then in this coloring, you can ask whether there is a blue triangle or red triangle. So you can ask whether there is a monochromatic triangle or 
triangle. So when we have a five vertices, this shows that uh, okay we can actually avoid the monochromatic triangle. However, if you have a six vertex, we can actually prove that I mean no matter how we color the edges by red or blue, you cannot avoid monochromatic triangle. Why? You choose one vertex x, and you see how the edges incident with this x are colored. There are five edges incident with this x. So at least three of them must have a same color, say red. Here, if what well, if this is red edge, then you get a red triangle. If this is red edge, you get a red triangle. If this is a red edge, you get a red triangle. So in order to avoid all red triangle, this must be all colored by blue, blue, blue. However, that gives you a blue triangle. So when you have six vertices, you cannot avoid red triangle or monochromatic triangle. But when there are five vertices, you can avoid. So this shows that if you have a six and above, vertices, you cannot avoid monochromatic triangle, but five and below vertices, <coughs> five or fewer vertices, you can already avoid. So this five and six are the threshold of this phenomena. And this is, I mean, this is a basic of the Ramsey theory. So in general, if you have uh, some complete graph on n vertices, and edges are colored in a chaotic way. Then you can always actually want to find uh, some very organized pattern. So that was a monochromatic triangle here, or in general, some very organized pattern. So you can ask that the, when there are some, I mean, arbitrary patterns, which could be very chaotic, and you want to ask whether you can always find some something smaller, but very organized pattern. So that introduced, uh, that's the theme of the Ramsey theory. <coughs> So, let's define this Ramsey number, so this phenomena in a more rigorous way. So given a pair of integer k and s, we define r k s be the smallest integer n such that for any red blue coloring, say red blue edge coloring, or complete graph on n vertices, you can always find the red monochromatic. KK, complete graph on K vertices, or blue monochromatic KS, complete graph on S vertices. So, monochromatic KK means, say, K4, blue K4, is that you have uh, four vertices, and all six edges between those vertices are, have the same color, then this is monochromatic, blue monochromatic K4. <coughs> so with the above example, this shows that R33 is bigger than 5. Because if N is 5, then this doesn't satisfy. It says that for any coloring, you should, we should be able to find the 
one of this monochromatic click. However, for five, we can avoid this. So this shows it's, uh, it's bigger than five. And this argument shows that if there are six vertices, then you always have either red click of size three or blue click of size three. So this is MO6. So it shows that this is actually six. In general, it is very difficult to actually estimate this number. For example, watch RKK. <coughs> so if you generalize, I mean, this kind of method, you take a one vertex and you see, I mean, certain red edges and certain blue edges, and then you see what happens here and you do this approach inductively, then you can actually show that, uh, I mean, RKS is at most RKS minus one plus R K minus one S. By using that, we can actually prove this is at most this. So, Okay, let's just write it this way. So that big O notation, I mean, we will explain what it means in uh, several minutes, but uh, let's just write this way. So this is MO4 to decay. <coughs> and what about the lower bound? So in order to find the lower bound, what do we have to do? Like this. So we consider a complete graph on n vertices. So we want to show that r k k is at least bigger than, I mean, strictly bigger than n. Then we consider a click of n vertices. And we color the edges. We, pre we have to present a coloring which avoids all monochromatic click of size k. So, we want to find the uh, explicit coloring. We want to, we have a complete graph on n vertices. We want to find the way to color it. So, lots of people actually try to find the uh, good way. So, this upper bound is exponential in k. So, ideal case is we want to also find the exponential lower bound. lower bound exponential in K. So lots of people actually try to show, try to find the way to color, but uh, all of them fails to provide the exponential lower bound here. I mean, they come up with very ingenious way, but uh, all of them failed. Until LED show the following. He showed that this bound holds. So this is just number, constant. So we forget this. This is polynomial, this is exponential. So this essentially says that uh, we can find the uh, exponential lower bound. <coughs> but what's so, what are so different about this LED theorem than all the previous construction of this coloring? One difference is that LED didn't really construct uh, one way to color the edges. What does it mean? He showed that, so I said that all previous ingenious construction fails to provide an exponential lower bound. It gives some sub-exponential lower bound. So best in that aspect is, I mean, that aspect is that uh, I mean, we have uh, this
this lower bound. So for arbitrary small epsilon, we can actually prove that uh, this Ramsey number is bigger than 2 to the some log times large power. That's proved only in 2016 using explicit color. Note that this is smaller than this. This is exponential. For, I mean, as k grows, this becomes much smaller, than, much bigger than this. <coughs> and those very, I mean, clever way of construction all failed. So what Eridish did was that he said that instead of clever way, let's do it in dumb way. Let's do a way that even a child can do. How? We just don't think about, I mean, anything. We just do coloring in a random way. We don't care what, what will happen. We don't care what happened. We just color edges in a random way and see what we can say. So, so again, what we want to do? We have a n vertex complete graph, and we want to find the red blue coloring of the edges of this complete graph. And what Eric suggests is that we color each edge with two color, red or blue. But how do we color for each edge? We flip a coin. We flip a fair coin for each edge. And we color them as the coin set. So for this pair, we, we flip a coin. And coin was half, then we color by red. And this one, we flip a coin. And then it was tail, then we color by blue. And this, this one, again, we flip a coin, it was head, dash head again, and head again, blue, and head, red. Why are doing that when we determine the color of this? We don't care what happens before. We just flip a coin, and it comes up with head and tail, then you color it accordingly. It's totally independent of what coin course we had for other pairs. <coughs> so independently with probability half. Then, what's the event which is bad for us? If there is a set of k vertices from the if it forms a monochromatic copy of case click of size k, then that's bad event. And what's the probability of that? So if you have a triangle, then all of them are red, then that's bad. That happens with probability half to the three. And all of them are blue, then that's also bad. That happens with probability 1 over 2 to the 3. So similarly, if we have a click of size k, the number of edges there is k choose 2. So bad events happens with uh, probability 2 times 2 to the minus k choose 2. And how many such events are there? So if we fix the k vertex, then we know the probability of this bad event. And then there are n choose k such possible events. Then by the union bound, if you compute the probability, that at least one of them occurs is at most n choose k times 2 to the 1 minus k choose 2. 
So all those events may not be this, I mean, independent. If we choose these K points, then the event that they are monochromatic. And if we choose another several points, several vertices, and they form a monochromatic one, they are not independent. Because this is monochromatic, then these three edges are likely to have the same color, which affects the probability of the other. However, if we just take the union bound and try to show that the, so we know the probability of a union of several events is at most the summation of probability of each event. And in here, the, we don't need independency. As long as each one of them probably we know, then this, I mean, event, this inequality holds. So we have this probability that, uh, I mean, we can estimate the probability that at least one of them occurs is this. <coughs> and if this probability is less than one, then what does it mean? That means with positive probability, none of the bad events happens. That means the coloring doesn't contain any monochromatic click of size k. If that were to be possible, so what we actually did, if we do it this way, at the end, we choose a coloring. There are many ways to color. So out of all possible way to color it, we choose one of them. But that, I mean, and this is the probability that uh, that coloring, that resulting coloring has no monochromatic click of size k. That means if that probability is positive, so if this probability is less than one, then 1 minus this is a probability that uh, our resulting coloring has no monochromatic click of size k. Then this, this concludes that uh, there actually is a coloring of kn. with no monochromatic copies of KK. Then this means that RKK is bigger than N. And what do we know? So we just want to make sure that the this is smaller than one. And instead of uh, just, I mean, try to figure out the best n value, which is by this, we just change this into this more, I mean, more friendly expression. And if we want to make sure that this is smaller than 1, then we, we know that uh, between this and this, this is always bigger. So then, I mean, we are, we are happy with what we wanted. We want to make sure that this is smaller than 1. <coughs> For that, I mean, you can just try to solve this then. If n is smaller than k times 2 to the k over 2 over e square root of 2, then we know that uh, this holds. And if that holds, then by the above logic, we can actually prove that there exists a two coloring, two edge coloring of a complete graph on n vertices 
which contains no monochromatic click oxide K. So this shows that this inequality holds. <coughs> so here what we have done. So here what we essentially have done is we consider some random coloring and then we compute the probability that it's the resulting coloring is as we desire. And then we show that it is strictly positive. In other words, uh, I mean, the probability that uh, it is not as we desire is strictly less than one. Then that shows the existence of the coloring that we desire. So one of the thing is that uh, if you think about this proof a little bit, then you might ask a question whether the probability is actually necessary. You can simply count, I mean, convert this into a combinatorial proof, which just counts the way to color. Instead of introducing this random coloring, you can just consider all possible set of all possible coloring. And then you just count the number of colors, colorings, which makes a specific set of K vertices into a monochromatic one. And you can compute the number. And then from that, you can estimate the number of colorings, which contains at least one monochromatic click of size K. And then you just subtract it from the entire number of colorings and to show that there is at least one coloring with no monochromatic copies of KK, which is a totally valid proof. However, this, this way of writing this proof in a probabilistic way provides a more clean computation and more, it pr provides a more intuition to us than this discrete computation. And also later, it allows us to use some known results from the probability. Of course, all of the, those proofs can be essentially transformed into a uh, weighted counting of something, some, some discrete object. But uh, interpreting in a probabilistic way, we get a more intuition. And then, and then computation tends to become simpler. That's one of the, I mean, philosophy of this probabilistic method. And another philosophy is that uh, sometimes if we just consider the average behavior of the certain, I mean, object, So let's put it this way. Sometimes considering average behavior is better than seeking for optimal. So that's another philosophy of this processing method. So here what this theorem did. So we wanted to find the lower bound of this Lamji number. For that, we want to find the optimal way of color, coloring edges of the click so that it avoids monochromatic click of size K. But seeking for optimal, I mean, you try to come up with very clever way of coloring, but uh, which only provides uh, sub optimal, sub exponential bound. But Erich instead consider this random coloring. So this random coloring here, I mean, what it actually do is that uh, out of all possible way of coloring it, so previous people try to find the best one out of this all, 
uh, or I mean way of color. But uh, instead of that, you just choose anything at random. You just choose one at random. So which kind of reflects the average behavior of this I mean object here, which was the coloring. And in this average behavior, I mean actually I already show that uh, this lower bound, which is exponential, which is better than any, any I mean clever construction. And also, if you're just seeking for average, the problem becomes much easier. So seeking for optimal one, the best one, you have to consider so many things, but uh, here you just did it in a dumb way. So considering average behavior is much easier, and then in this case, it provides a decent result. So in many cases, this average behavior is not much worse than optimality, but uh, it's much easier to obtain. So that's another philosophy of this probabilistic method. And one other thing is that uh, here we simply describe our probability space. So here what actually happened is that uh, out of all possible way of coloring edges of complete graph, each coloring has certain probability of be being picked, which adds up to one. That forms a probability space. Out of that, you choose one coloring with a specific probability. In this probability space, you consider the I mean, probability of each event. However, instead of I mean, fully describing this probability space, you just describe it in a simpler way. You color each edge with red, blue independently with probability half then it, this naturally introduces the probability space. So, which is what we will do throughout this course. Instead of rigorously, I mean, explain what the probability space is, you just, I mean, describe the probability space in a more simpler way. I mean, technically, we can, I mean, if we want to be rigorous, we can define probability space. I mean, all of our probability space is discrete, so discrete probability space is a finite or countable, say countable set S together with a function, probability function P, which is defined on the subset of S. such that uh, for this subset, the value is between 0 and 1, and the entire set has a uh, priority 1, and if we have a pairwise disjoint set, let's say it could be infinitely many, and probability of union of them is same as probability of summation of them, summation of each. And we say for each subset of this as an event. And we will compute the probability of the event. So in the above example, S is collection of all possible two colorings of the edges of complete graph Kn. And when we say that uh, an event, we fix a set of k vertices, and then we consider the event that they form a monochromatic kk, we mean the collection of all two colorings, two edge colorings, which makes this specific k vertices monochromatic copy or click of k vertices. So we consider all those sets of two edge coloring and 
we compute the probability of them, then that's the probability of this event. But again, instead of I mean fully describing this, we will simply describing it in a more simpler way. Then we I mean assume that everybody can figure out the what exactly is the, our discrete probability space. <coughs> so now in the next video let's consider some examples, some more examples so that we can get more feeling on what we will do.